Welcome to our Birds of Assessor session. Uh, my name is Julian Kunkel and I'm from the University of Reading, but I'm also a board member at the IO500. Today I will speak about the Virtual Institute of IO and give you a brief introduction about this institute. So what is VI for IO in short? It is a platform for an IO enthusiasts for exchanging information. It is based on a wiki as a central hub, so a web page, but we also have mailing lists and Slack to support users to discuss relevant aspects in I.O. Second goal is to foster training and collaboration in the field of high performance I.O. So I'm very excited to announce that uh, just this year we teamed up with the HPC certification forum to enable in the future a certification of I.O. relevant competencies in HPC, of course. Next, we want to track and encourage the deployment of large uh, storage systems. So we supported in the past and will continue to support the IO500. And also we are hosting information about data centers, in particular their storage systems. This is our web page you can, that you can visit anytime and register. So let me briefly talk about this data center list, which is called Comprehensive Data Center List or CDCL in short. So CDCL contains system characteristics for sites, supercomputers and storage. The system model is based on an extensible JSON schema with an editor and you can basically support, record all these components that you have in your site and the subcomponents. Then you can record characteristics and their peak values and also some IO or well any kind of 500 values basically. So that allows you to extend and provide information about components such as sites, supercomputers, but also online storage, tape, archives, the compute node details, what kind of storage nodes they are comprised of, accelerators, and so forth. There are some aspects, characteristics supported such as costs, as well as energy consumption or memory, and so forth. Today being we have 56 sites that have recorded some data in the data center list. So some sites have multiple um, file systems, in fact, and then you can explore various metrics such as capacity group by country or by vendor, for instance, on the web page and all the data is available publicly. So this data center list is integrated, can be integrated in any web page. So we have an editor. Um, that you can use to build your model and then you can download a JSON describing your um, site with all the storage and so forth characteristics and embed this with a viewer into your web page. Our goal is basically to establish a standardized presentation of systems to make different HPC systems easier comparable. So of course we also like to host the data then at VI4IO at the comprehensive data center list. But everyone is free to use it. And of course, we're working to extend the schema. So it's very easy to add new data centers and storage systems, all by the wiki. There is a web page that you can visit and to submit and create basically stubs for those pages. So here is a view of the editor, which you can see a site and the site here uh, the NCSA has different has one supercomputer but different networks and a last to storage system and so forth. So we have this flexible schema that can be updated as needed, which has this recursive component model that you can see on the left. So as the storage system Luster, for instance, has nodes um, with here the name Luster given, but you can have different nodes like metadata and so forth. And this model data is then stored in also a database that can be queried and there's also a way to draw relations between components like how are they interconnected. So let me now introduce the roadmap for 2021 and how this has some slight connection to the IO500 activity. So we want to support the IO500 by extending the current practice such that users can submit their CDCL schema for an IO500 submission, defining the system. Actually, 
this is, was already possible at the moment and it was linked at the VIFOIO web page. But we want to expand this a bit further by providing storage system specific schemas that use language that is common to the storage and file system, such that a practitioner would understand easily what do these characteristics mean. For example, for Lustre, we would like to um, allow the input details for OSTs, meta MDTs, and specific configuration flags that are performance relevant. The system can automatically compute um, kind of and infer quantities from subcomponents, such as we've seen here. When I input a couple of data for different types of nodes, I com can easily um, click the three cult button and get a sum in terms of the number of servers. Therewith, I can get from a more specific schema to a more generalized schema that can be easier compared. So the basic tool is basically here, but what we need is we need vendors to create most appropriate schemas. Yeah, and this task pretty much aligns uh, with IO500, so we try to support the IO500 activity here. So next, I want to talk briefly about the journal of high performance storage. This is a new journal that we started in 2020 pretty much. We have tested it with a, with a workshops and um, it uses a latex and alternatively Google Doc workflows. The goal for 2021 is to scale up the existing, um, the existing implementation such that we involve more editors and of, of course more reviewers and more paper submissions. So its main features are that it supports open reviews. That means anyone can provide feedback to papers and they are openly published or by it, they are not yet accepted for the journal. So it's really open. We have the concept of living papers. That means even a sub submitted paper can be discussed still and can be improved with main minor revisions after it has been accepted. We aim strongly for dig digital replicability for the analysis and the experiments. And we have free open access, free for the submitter, but also free for the viewer and reader. There are already several papers available for open review in the incubator, of which we will soon compile the first issue. So there are also ad additional activities that we're going to drive in 2021 for supporting I.O. benchmarking. So our goal is to evolve H the HPC slash IOR repository further. For instance, we lately added the MD Workbench benchmark to provide more latency sensitive analysis and interactive use cases at supporting documentation and also Im embedding this by providing testing using IO500 as a vehicle. Also, we'd like to finally deploy the performance regression suite that we developed with Jenkins um, that is now there for a while, but it has been problematic in adding to open some server ports. Um, we hope to overcome this. But if you have interest to do some testing, there is Jenkins schemas available. Also, we want to support, continue to support users to run and discuss I.O. benchmarks, of course. And another activity that we started in 2019 was towards next generation I.O. interfaces. And we drove forward to create a community forum to discuss those kind of next generation API to get more toward a community standard. However, due to the coronavirus and so on, this activity has a bit um, well, slow down. So we must really revitalize this past approach. And I hope that this will be a great addition to the community as a whole. And let me just conclude. Everyone is welcome to participate in the VI 4IO. And it's really an open forum. And now enjoy the rest of this EUF.